Well, we've got anime chicks, goth chicks, and a couple of dudes just trying to make sense of it all. It may sound like we're backstage at the My Chemical Romance reunion tour, but this is Nindy Nation episode 166. Greetings, citizens! I'm Jeff, and today we're taking a look at the best new indie games for the Nintendo Switch, releasing through November 20th. You can find us on Twitter, come hang out with us on Discord, and even see some of the games from today's episode live during Nindies at Night this Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern. The Nindy Gods smiled down upon us last week, citizens, because for the first time since May, we had a brand new Indie World presentation, and with it came a few exciting announcements you don't want to miss. So hit that like button, subscribe if you're new here, and let's get started with the three Indie World Shadow Drops that released since episode 165. If you've never seen the video of Arlo reacting to the Metroid Dread announcement, I'll link it below, because during this week's Indie World, that was basically me when Cellar Door Games announced not only a Switch port of Rogue Legacy 2, but also that it was a Shadow Drop launching the very same day. I've been playing this game since it launched two years ago on PC Early Access, and on Wednesday I happily bought two copies at 25 bucks each, one for me and one for my son so that should tell you how I feel about it. After setting the standard for the modern Nindy trifecta all the way back in 2013, I really feel like the team's done it all over again. Of course, this is a side-scrolling action platformer with procedurally generated levels, rogue-like mechanics, and RPG elements! <laughs> and just like the original, it is among the best. What's new this go-around is a beautiful hand-drawn art style, but also so much more. There's now 20 different classes, most of which have entirely different playstyles, like the magician using mid-range attacks, the archer with the long-range attacks, the chef who reflects every type of attack, and the boxer who gets up close and personal. And that's just scratching the surface. There's also a new equipment system called Resolve that kind of acts like equipment and weight, but it's a per-run metric that allows you tons of choice for how you upgrade in the middle of your run. The game also has a new jump kick mechanic that changes the way you deflect and generally deal with dangerous terrain, and um, ugh, it's just so good, you guys. If you even remotely enjoy this type of game, it comes with Nindy Nation's strongest recommendation. And if you like what you see but you're new to the genre, this is a great place to start thanks to a suite of, quote, house rules that allow you to make the game as easy or as tough as you want. It's available now and will easily be right near the top of our favorite Nindies of 2022. And then we saw the lovely husband and wife duo from Nova Scotia who go by the studio name Max Inferno as they introduced and released their chill, cozy puzzle game, A Little to the Left. I picked up this game for my daughter who's been having a great time with it. The premise is that you're presented with a screen of household items, say a few pencils on a table or a row of books on a shelf, and you figure out how best to organize them. There's multiple ways to solve most of the puzzles, so you could organize the items in a line, or by size, or by color, and so on and so forth. Occasionally, Rookie the Cat will intervene to do what cats do best, you know, mess with your sh**, and it all comes together in a delightful little three-hour experience that brings a new daily challenge to keep things fresh after you've completed the initial 70 or so levels. It released by publisher Secret Mode for $14.99, and while I enjoy it for what it is, I could imagine it being even more appealing once it drops to 10 bucks. Last up from the Indie World Shadow Drops is the only one I've yet to play, but think it'd make for a great time on Nindies at Night. Once Upon a Jester was presented by the developer trio Bonte Avond and is a silly game of improv between a jester and his best friend Sock as they travel the land to become the stars of the Royal Theatrical Spectacle. It seems like a mix between mini-games and knowing your audience as you take the stage to perform plays and musicals all backed by storytelling, dialogue, and music that were often put in the game as they were themselves being improv which ratchets up the silliness even that much more. 
There aren't yet reviews as of this recording, but being published by Crunching Koalas is a good sign. So if the reviews pan out well, you can pick it up for $14.99. I think by now you know where I stand on Rogue Legacy 2, but if this is a new series for you and you want to see more of it or any of the other Indie World Shadow Drops, let me know and we'll try to include them on Nindies at Night this Thursday. Now, with that out of the way, let's look at the week ahead. These are the 10 notable new releases hitting the Nintendo Switch through Sunday, November 20th. Hey, so there's a game from Devolver Digital coming out on Monday, and <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I don't know either. McPixel 3 is developed by Mikolaj Kaminsky and Sos Sosowski. I think it's an adventure game of some sort, but I can't tell how much actual game is in here or if it's more of a gag-filled adventure, but it features punching a T-Rex into outer space, peeing in sports cars, and Steve. Look, it's $9.99, and I kinda think I need this in my life? Was that a question or a statement? And then on the 15th, Ruby, you know, the show that started on Rooster Teeth then became an anime phenomenon? It gets a new game developed by Way Forward called Ruby Arrowfell for 30 bucks. I don't watch the show, but I bring it up here because this game looks sick. It's an action adventure with semi-open areas, so like a Metroidvania, but more limited in scope and with much more emphasis on combat. You can swap between any of the four Ruby characters in real time, and the characters' abilities evolve as you progress through the game. Looks like it's got all the voice actors and same writers and some new music and just all kinds of good stuff for fans of the series. I don't know, just seeing this makes me want to check out the show. If you happen to be into the show, this takes place during Volume 7. Alright, someone convinced me to check out this game, or the show, or both, because it looks pretty cool. Rattaleka takes a break from the usual Friday releases alongside IC Games to bring us The Bounty Huntress, a simple but admittedly interesting Metroidvania for just $4.99. I mean, yeah, it's clearly the studio's take on Symphony of the Night, and though it goes for an exploration style focused on several large open areas, similar to our last game, for the price, it looks like a pretty good time. I see a lot of interesting weapons and abilities in the trailer, but I can't tell if those are temporary level pickups or if there's a deeper equipment and progression system, but I think it's the latter. Either way, the Bounty Huntress looks like a nice change of pace for Rataleka. Then we've got Super Chicken Jumper, an interesting blend of genres by Sewer Cat and Heavy Sheep that released on PC last year and has no critic reviews, but an extremely high user score. Across six worlds, it's a blend of a side-scrolling shoot-'em-up and an auto-runner, with an over-the-top, ultra-violent premise of a spy chicken set out to save the world. The levels scroll on their own and do so very quickly, but you have full control of your character who can equip a slew of melee weapons and guns. Seems like a pretty short affair, but at least East Asia Soft has brought it to the eShop for five bucks, so at that price, it might be worth giving a shot. Unless you're chicken. Yeah! Eh? And Virtual Arts Studio, a small Brazilian team who makes simple mobile-slash-PC games, brings The Awakening of Mummies to the Switch for $2.99. This isometric take on the Lemmings formula isn't anything to write home about, but the perspective and tone of the otherwise classic puzzle setup about guiding characters to each stage's exit has been well-received on other platforms. As an appropriately priced, bite-sized puzzle game, eh, I ain't mad at it. Next up is a game that can probably be best described as... Indie? <laughs> See, Wobble Dogs by Animal Uprising is a friendly, cozy pet simulation meant for all ages, but it is about as quirky indie game as it gets. 
That's because, besides the hilarious physics stuff, these dogs mutate and have random generation of all kinds of things, from their appearance to how they mutate into other creatures, all the way to their guts on the inside, which you can see as you play Pet Doctor. It's kinda like Nintendogs, but if you replaced all of the Nintendo charm with, like, Bug Snacks or Octodad. It's very cute and has seen mostly positive reviews, but a quick word of caution as this is published by Secret Mode. They roll up to Sumo Group, who is ultimately owned by Tencent, which I didn't discover until researching this game. So we'll cover it this week, but going forward, eh, I think it's kinda hard to call a game that ultimately rolls up to the CCP as necessarily indie. However, Q Remastered is absolutely an indie, and if you like your brain teasers based on physics or obtuse puzzle solving, you're probably going to want to see this one. Sitting somewhere between Snipper Clips and Baba Is You, Q Remastered uses a very simple aesthetic and basic instructions to do things like get a ball into a cup, move an item across the screen, or just tip something over. You do that by drawing basic shapes on the screen, kinda like how Scribblenauts would ask you to solve puzzles by coming up with words to type. You draw something, and the game decides how it's weighted and balanced, and then you use that creation to try and solve the puzzle. It's pretty cool. It comes by way of Leka Games and releases with a 33% discount for $4.55. Now, if you're into the more intrinsic, somber storytelling and emotions that indie games can help elicit, and especially if you enjoyed the wonderful story told in To The Moon, you're gonna be all over Finding Paradise. Developed by Freebird Games, Thank you. And released to overwhelming critical acclaim back in 2017, this follow-up to To the Moon has a similar premise, where you dig into the memories of a dying man to piece together some simple puzzles and help him fulfill his dying wish. You can expect all the same feels with lovely pixel art and a chill but emotional tone that should last a few hours but leave you with an impression that lasts much longer after the fact. If you're not into a slower pace and a game that's all about the narrative, this probably isn't for you. But if you eat this kind of stuff up, get ready, because Finding Paradise releases this week for $11.99. Solo developer LightUp has been partnering with Rataleka to release a handful of simple $5 games, all of which I've enjoyed as weekend romps in their respective genres. First with Mages and Treasures, which tackled top-down action adventures, then Super Sunny Island for that level-based 2D run-and-gun fare, and this week with Slime's Journey, also for $4.99. This time, the familiar colorful artwork has been employed for a mini Metroidvania about, um, well, a slime on a journey. I plan to check this one out, and fully expect, just like their other recent releases, to find a fun little game that'll last me a weekend without draining my wallet. Last up for the week is a challenging 2D action platformer for those of you who love gory 17th century gothic vibes, as Andrade Games and Red Art Games bring us Heidelberg 1693 for $13.49. That's a lot of numbers. You actually play as one of the infamous musketeers, complete with one of those pointy fencing sword thingies and an old-timey musket. You'll use those weapons to impale and explode all kinds of hideous creatures that, frankly, should probably die, and it's set to the backdrop of cutscenes that are styled after silent-era films, which is kind of the stuff of my nightmares. It's a neat little package that is definitely trying something different with tone, and appears to have strong potential. I'm not sure about the price, because we don't really know how long it is, but it features multiple endings if you wrap it up and just want more. What do you think? Gonna get in on that gory musketeer action, or are you more here for the somber thought pieces like Finding Paradise? Personally, I'm feeling the Metroidvania action in The Bounty Huntress, the fast-paced combat of Ruby Arrowfell, and the... I, I don't know, whatever the hell is going on in McPixel 3. 
super interested in that one. Though it is hard to deny the clear winner from today's episode is last week's shadow drop of Rogue Legacy 2. Tell me what's standing out to you down in the comments, and if you'd like to see any of this week's releases this Thursday on our Nindies at Night stream. You can also find Nindy Nation on Twitter, and if you're looking for other indie fans to geek out with, come stop by our Discord. Thanks so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and chatting down in the comments. If you want to help us grow, the easiest way to do so is to share Nindy Nation with others. Otherwise, that's it for today, citizens. Until next week, I'm Jeff. This has been Nindy Nation episode 166. And remember, no matter what kind of game you're looking for, Nindy Nation will be right here to help you find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced.